I, uh, I know that uh, there are concerns and uh, we'll talk about them at the end of my presentations with respect to the cost of post-secondary uh, education and the announcement that uh, Minister Doug Horner made yesterday about the market modifiers. It does mean that there will be an increase in the uh, cost of the few programs, but current students and those looking to enroll in 2010 will not be impacted. The Minister carefully reviewed uh, all of the proposals and uh, these were proposals submitted by the post-secondary institutions and he has consulted with student leaders uh, before making his decisions. Um, in a number of cases, I believe uh, six cases, uh, tuition fees were set to uh, too low when they were cap capped in 2004. And to be clear, uh, this is a, a one-time uh, offer to deal with some exceptional circumstances. And uh, it will affect uh, a number of students that are in uh, in, in the faculties that, uh, that have been identified. But we are fully committed to uh, limiting uh, any of the uh, tuition increases to the CPI, Consumer Price Index, and that is 1.5% uh, for this year. And uh, I, uh, I know that for, for, for some, it will be uh, an increase in hardship, and we're looking at other uh, programs and other ways of ensuring that uh, uh, we improve uh, accessibility and affordability as much as possible here in the province of Alberta for all of our post-secondary students. Now, before we uh, move on to some of the questions, I just want to talk a bit about uh, the big picture for Alberta and uh, the uh, priorities that your government is committed to. Just as uh, all of you are preparing uh, for your own future, government is also looking down the road towards the future of this province. And without a doubt, one of our key initiatives government is to improve our competitiveness. This initiative is tied uh, closely to you, our post-secondary institutions, and to our students. On one hand, as Alberta develops a competitive economy, it creates opportunities to diversify and also grow industries that ultimately create a value-added economy. In addition, a competitive economy creates more jobs. It uh, has more opportunities for you to use the knowledge and the skills that you're acquiring here uh, at the University of Alberta. And more jobs also lead to improved services. And those services are, of course, in health, in education, and ultimately an improved standard of living. And our goal is to make sure that you and the next generation do enjoy the same quality of life as my generation has uh, enjoyed in the province. In order to remain uh, competitive on the global stage, we will need new technology. We will need innovation. And that's the next generation of the, the leaders to step forward. In simple terms, you are vital to our competitive advantage and are a cornerstone of our future economy. Competitiveness is important, of course, for many reasons. Now, while a competitive economy may, may uh, lead to lower prices, uh, higher wages and more jobs, it also leads to technological adaptation and innovation. In the long run, all the breakthroughs that we've enjoyed so far and will continue to see in health and education, science, green technology, will rest in our province's ability to remain competitive and support further innovation. Now, in order to improve our overall competitiveness and help utilize the skills uh, that you bring, uh, we have passed uh, last week, or the week before, Bill 1, which is the Alberta Competitiveness Act. Now the Act creates a, a mechanism to allow business, government, and all of us to better coordinate their efforts and work towards our shared goal of an improved economy and a better quality of life. Now this coordination will remove some of the barriers that face all industries in Alberta. And it's not just uh, oil and gas, it's agriculture, it's uh, small business, it's financial industries that are doing uh, business in Alberta, uh, forestry obviously, tourism, all of the industries that have a number of barriers that have been placed uh, over a number of years uh, really in a regulatory uh, side. Ultimately, we want to add value to, to what we produce and we do have a number of barriers which are really over regulation and cross-jurisdictional trade competitors. And depending on which economist uh, you listen to, uh, I know a few years ago, uh, some have put the value 
of uh, these trade impediments and trade barriers across Canada at about $14 billion. Is it all here in Alberta? Certainly not. But uh, I can tell you that there is huge room for improvement and uh, we have already done that uh, discussion. We have one agreement in place with the province of British Columbia, which is called TILMA, Trade Investment Labor and Mobility Agreement. So essentially, if you're a small business owner in Alberta, you're automatically registered in BC and vice versa. We've harmonized a number of the transportation regulations in terms of size and length of trailer. But there is still much more to do. And uh, later, uh, towards the end of April, we'll be sitting down with Premier Brad Wall, Premier of Saskatchewan, and we'll be signing an agreement similar to uh, TILMA, uh, but uh, he's got a lot of work to, to do because I believe they have something like 78 or 82 Crown corporations that he has to work through to get through a final agreement. So simply put, this legislation will position Alberta to be globally competitive. And just coming back from Abu Dhabi and just seeing how uh, Abu Dhabi is adapting to the current market conditions in, in, uh, in the Middle East and what they're doing with investment in education and technology. Uh, I know that we're, we, we have an opportunity to build good partnerships in new markets, whether it be in the Middle East, uh, in, uh, in China, in India, uh, Korea, obviously, or Brazil. We have uh, probably lived through the worst recession uh, in recent history. Some say uh, just as bad as you know, going back to the depression of the 30s. Me personally, I can tell you that uh, the mid 80s were the most difficult for our uh, 20 uh, percent interest rates, uh, mortgage rates uh, that were just simply you just couldn't keep up. If you're running a small business or just raising a family and trying to pay the mortgage and keep your family fed, it wasn't an easy thing to do. And uh, so for me, I thought that was the most difficult. But if you look at the current uh, this, this past year, we've come through difficult times, especially in the oil and gas sector, and uh, of course, uh, agriculture forestry has been at its lowest uh, point ever. And as a result, there are some very positive signs uh, of, of the, the various industries starting to come. There are what we call green shoots in the economy, it's looking positive. But there are also a number of, of factors out there that we have to be very, very careful of. And all I want to say is that in the province of Alberta, we are blessed because we were prepared for this economic downturn. We are the only jurisdiction uh, across Canada that quite frankly has set aside two savings funds. One is the Alberta Heritage Savings Trust Fund that was set back uh, in, in the period of Peter Lougheed when he was premier. That was at about 17 billion in value, dropped down to about uh, 13 through the recession, the market losses has recovered to about 14.3 and will be back up to about 17 at the end of this year. The other is what we call a sustainability fund. It's a, it's a cash surplus fund that we set aside uh, just to ensure that uh, we had uh, something to cushion the blow to our revenue because most of our revenue stream is from natural resources and we do have the most volatile revenue stream in North America. And that fund has now allowed us to maintain all uh, of our programs uh, support the most vulnerable uh, Albertans, to be seniors, uh, health, uh, education, without taking the drastic cuts in, in the budget. We are tapping into that fund, and we will be tapping into that fund uh, over uh, this year and, and the next. The fund uh, presently is at about uh, 14 billion. Uh, we'll see what happens towards the end of the year, but uh, the, the year-end financial statements are going to look a lot better than the, the first forecast because there are uh, good positive signs of uh, recovery. Now in the meantime,